Okay, where we left off, we were working on our image gallery, and then when we click on these thumbnails, they're buttons, and as buttons, we get, we've tracing some output to the window, but what we want to do is, when we click on the buttons, we want to get the path from the buttons to our images so we can load the images into the image gallery, right? So that's what we're going for. So we're going to code that right now. So if we go to the timeline and we go to our action script window, what we want to do is we'll comment this out now. We know that works. So when we click on the individual buttons, we get a response, right? But now what we want to do is we want to set up a variable called path. And this variable will be a string type variable. All right. And and content loader info dot URL. Okay. So with this piece of code, we say variable path is a string event based on the mouse event, the current target of the event and the info, the URL. Now let's see what happens if we trace that out. So we could say trace path and now go to our gallery and let's say click on this and then we can see in our output window that we get the path to the image file, image2, but we get a lot of stuff that we're not going to need on a website, including our C drive, and then our users folder, and then our username, desktop, all that stuff. So this stuff's not going to be useful on a web server, right? But what, what is useful is possibly this information right here to help target the actual image. So that's what we're going to do now. So now that we know that's working, comment that out and put in the next line of code. And we'll say, now that we have this variable path to work with, we'll say path, and it's a, it's a string uh, variable, path equals path dot, and we're going to look for a substring, okay, and we'll say path dot last index Path dot last index of the forward slash plus one. All right, we're going to need since we have let's see here we need one of those. We have an open parentheses here, an open and close parentheses here, meaning we need to close this parentheses off right here, and then what we'll do is copy, paste, and we'll and you can see that gives us just our image file right here. Now that's going to be very helpful. Now we're able to isolate just this part of the output. And you can see that we were able to do that by using the substring method and then calling the last index of this character in the string, which is the forward slash. So that worked out pretty good. All right, comment that out. I leave it there because I know now that it gave us something and that it worked. Okay, so now our variable path has just, will give us just the name of the image for the thumbnail that we've clicked on. So now what we can do is try to load our image. So what we'll do is we'll say loader MC with capital M lowercase c dot loader which is inside of loader MC. Loader is the component inside of it dot load okay and new URL request right open and close parentheses here and we'll say images forward slash right notice 
quotation marks, images forward slash, end of quotation marks, plus the path variable. All right, and now if we test it out, it works. Okay, a couple more things to finish up here. Now our images are loading. So I've already added some extra stuff here uh, just to speed up the process. So now what I've added is variable text path because we want to have text for each image. And I set the variable, the word text path with a capital P to a string variable. Then I say text path equals path, right? And path equals the name of the image, like image 1.jpg, image 2.jpg, image 3.jpg. And I say, let's get a further substring from it. So starting at um, character 5, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, would be after the, the word image, right? And ending at character 6, let's say, which would be image 1, it should give us the number of the image only. So then we trace that out. And let's go test it out. So we hit Control Enter. And we click on Gallery. And I'm going to click on all of these buttons, loading each image. And then our output should just be the number of the image. So instead of just image 1.jpg, it should just be a 1. So if we close that, you can see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're able to extract from the variable just the number. So from image 1.jpg, just the 1. Image 2.jpg, just the 2. So on and so forth. So now we've got the number, and we can use these numbers to coordinate with elements on a timeline. So now watch what I'm going to do. So I'm going to now get this um, movie clip here, which you call image text and I'm going to edit it. So I'm going to double click on it to go inside of it. So now I'm inside of it and you can see the timeline is empty. So once again, scene one, there's my big timeline. I double click on this movie clip and now I'm in image text editing mode and you can see here there's my little background color and all that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer and I'll call this layer actions and on this layer I'm going to type an action that says stop. Okay. So I make a stop action right here, and then I'll just copy this, copy frame, paste frame, paste frame, paste frame, and paste frame. And now I'm going to delete this background image, so that's gone. And in place of it, what I'm going to put is a text box. So I'm going to get my text tool, TLF text, 18 points. The color needs to be black, and the color also needs to be 100% instead of 0% um, alpha. Okay, so, and I want that to be black once again. All right, and I'm going to make this text box here. And, and I'll just say, I'm going to put a little text in here that says, Mammoth, Mammoth, Geyser, or Mammoth, Yellowstone. Okay, All right, and then I'll make a second, go F6 on the keyboard, make a second keyframe here, and I'll change the text to Liberty Cap, and then I'll change here F6 put another keyframe here and I'll change the text to geyser let's say one right so now I've got different text on those three keyframes right so now what we can do is we can try to target this movie clip in our code so I'll go here open this up we see we've got a variable now called text path that pulls up the number that we want and now all I have to do is say image text dot go to and stop and I'll say text path. All right, we'll see if that works. So now 
click on gallery you see there's the text that we wanted and if I click here the text changes based on the number of the keyframe so that works pretty good now I didn't put any for four and five so but for one two and three it jumps to the keyframe in the movie clip so that's nice and the default will be on one which is fine now over here this text box that we have output text I used this as another form of troubleshooting so far in troubleshooting we've been using the um, we've been using solely the trace command to the output window but I, what I wanted to show you was you could also send things to a text box so I've got a TLF text box here called output text with a capital T and what I can do is I can go back to my code and I can say let's see here I can say output text dot text right equals equals text path and when I do that I could also instead of tracing things to the output window I could trace them to a text box so if I do that you'll see here if I go to gallery I should see the number show up and you can see it in the right hand corner there so instead of sending the output to the output window I can also do it to a text box as long as the text box has an instance name and so that works also okay another nice thing that we can do is on my other galleries that I had done I had a nice drop shadow underneath the image and the thumbnails and we can do that really easily because we've got our UI loader in a movie clip and we've got our thumbnails in a movie clip so that's going to be really easy to do so all I got to do is select let's say the thumbnails here and I'll go down here to the filters right in the property window and I'll say add a drop shadow right and the drop shadow the distance 5 pixels the angle 45 that looks good let me see here um, uh, five blur okay that looks good right so now and then I'll select this guy right here and I'll also put a drop shadow right here and you can see the drop shadow instantly right here five pixel blur hundred percent strength 45 degree angle distance five pixels and the color black and so now if we run our gallery and you can see here that click on the gallery now I've got a nice drop shadow underneath my different thumbnails I also changed the text color to this like kind of aqua greenish blue which looks a lot nicer I'll give you a last look at the code here and there it is you can see here here's the action script smaller font you can maximize the video and that was it